got a leaky brake puck. So the brake puck will leak from here. Usually you can tell by it dripping out of the, the caliper. If you do an inspection on the plug here and everywhere else, usually it's leaking out of the backside here. So along there, get a bunch of drips. So we're gonna change the O-ring in here, clean this caliper out, do a kind of a service on that. So disconnect your lines, put some caps on. You're gonna get a few bunch of drips out of there. So if you get a drip pan ready, minimizes the mess. So next thing we'll do is take out these bolts and then the caliper will slide out and then we'll break that down and clean it and get it ready for a new O-ring. Here's the back. You can note the uh, fluid all over the brake pad. And then you can take this and slide this out. Once that's disconnected, that's capped. Slide that out of the way. And then if you look at the back side of this, usually you can tell that it's leaking because this is all wet. But we'll do it a little, we'll clean it up. We'll do an inspection around there and make sure there's no cracks or nothing in the caliper. And while we're doing this, we can also look at our brake pads. Take a look at those. They look good, but we'll clean them up with some brake clean before we put those back on. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull this puck out of here. We're going to place the O-ring on that, clean this up before we do that, and put it back on here and then bleed the brakes. So here's the brake caliper. It's got it capped done a brief inspection on these to look for cracks and things that may have caused the uh, leaking at the puck here but so what uh, this one this aircraft operates out of a grass strip so there's constantly grass and stuff caught in the caliper and then when the cal caliper actuates the puck comes out and exposes the, um, the side of the puck and then all that grass and crud gets stuck in there and then when the caliper gets retracted back in from vibrations or whatever it kind of pulls that grit in there so it probably scored and cut and nicked the o-ring on the inside there so we're going to clean this up solvent tank we're going to pop this puck out of here the way we do that is you can take this cap off and just briefly blow, blow a little bit of compressed air in the fitting there that'll pop the puck out and then we'll clean that all real good and yeah, we'll replace the o-rings we'll fill it with some fluid and reassemble now to pop this loose, you're going to take an air nozzle. We're going to put a little bit of pressurized air in there and that will pop that seal out. Now obviously you don't want to do this aimed at your face so you don't injure yourself. So I'm going to turn the puck facing away from me. Hold the puck, find that. Give it a little blast of air in there. There goes the puck. Now we can clean that out, remove the seal, put a new seal in, and put it back together. All right, so now that you got it cleaned, you can see this one's kind of pitted. We we'll give it a good visual inspection of the inside of the caliper. Um, we're gonna lean this away. So if you look here, you see pitting get the light ice one's not picking up but it, between here and here it's pretty clean which is where the o-ring sits so give it a visual on there if that o-ring comes out here too far it gets into that area that's pitted it'll usually cut the o-ring and then it starts leaking so um these types of things i'll probably service at one time with an o-ring if it come back to it next year it's leaking again then it's probably time that these need to be resurfaced or um find a replacement so do a visual inspection of that area in there, just make sure there's nothing cutting that. Take the piston, visual on that, any light scratches are on that, you can take a little piece of scotch Bright and just kind of clean that up, but looking for any scoring that might be causing the damage to the o-ring, and then we'll 
replace the o-ring with a new one okay we got our new o-ring got our puck we're gonna install that our little dc4 hydraulic fluid Stretch that over. Very well, is it? That's what I get for doing it with my phone. Stretch that over there. Then what I like to do to make sure that isn't rolled, take my pick, get behind the O-ring, make sure not to scratch the O-ring or cut the O-ring. Just take the pick and roll it around a couple times. That'll make sure there's no kinks. Just do this, that way I'll keep the O-ring from being twisted. Make sure it's seated. can put that back into the caliper then before we install this we'll make sure our bleed screw opens and closes freely so when we go to bleed it it's a piece of cake so next step now will be to um, we'll uh, I'll pre-fill this before I put it on the plane we'll put fluid into that just to kind of start the bleeding process and then we'll install the caliper and bleed the brakes that's it. Now before I put these valves back in, I'll put a little bit of anti-seize on that adjuster. This one was actually plugged. I had to clean that out before. But a little bit of anti-seize on that. Nice and clean. Drop our back plate on there. Feed your brake back up in there. Uh, put a little bit of your approved lubricant on the pins before you slide it back in there and then you can feed the backside up through put your hardware in and then we will proceed to before I close this up I'll actually squirt a little bit of hydraulic fluid into there first just to start getting fluid going down into the caliper and then we'll connect this and then we'll go through the bleeding process so what I do here is take an oil can filled with hydraulic fluid, squirt that in there, just kind of prime that thing just so we're not sitting there pumping on the brakes a bunch, but pre-fill it there. You'll watch it get drawn in. You can even see little bubbles come up there, but essentially that once that gets full, it won't take any more fluid, and then the, you'll see the surface tension hold the hydraulic fluid kind of right at the tip there. So do that a couple times once that's ready. Then you can disconnect your cap, install the brake line, and then we'll fill the reservoir and do the the brake do the brake bleeding process. Then, so then filling the reservoir on this is on the master cylinder on the brakes. We did the left brake, so that's the left pedal, and then we're going to remove that cap right there. A quarter inch plug we're gonna fill that that's the res master reservoir right there so we're gonna fill through that hole with that same oil can we used to prime the caliper we're gonna fill this chamber up till that fluids you can see it in the top of the hole there then we'll cap it and then we'll go through the brake bleeding process but since this is a uh, pretty high gravity fed system really you could almost fill that let it sit overnight and most of the air will bleed up into the master cylinder but so we'll pressure bleed it we'll fill it up to the level or the base of the cylinder we'll cap it then we'll pump the brakes we'll bleed it out of the caliper um, i'm not going to video that that'll be its own thing maybe some other time is actual bleeding of the brakes but so next once that's full bleed the brakes and then you'll be ready to rock once you got it installed make sure you don't have any leaks here or here and then your brakes are bled properly. Have a good day.